lot of time being spent here by Ehome trying to figure out what they want to do. If this is going to be a mid tiny safe lane with Shrak, I've seen End play that tiny before, but could be a mid with Shrak. So they take a lot of time here for that fourth pick. They end up going into the Storm Spirit. So mobility in the name of the game for Ehome. As Tiny should be able to get a Blink Dagger. And then you've got Storm, of course, with the Ball Lightning. They've got some good setup. And it'll be the Vortex with the Split Earth Avalanche Toss. Five seconds remaining. Let's see what newbie do to counter this as th their control right now lies with the root of the troll and the stun of the sand king they could use a, a lot more here up against storm with the vortex so a shrack with a split earth tiny avalanche toss Both teams kind of taking a lot of time here on their fourth picks in terms of reserve time. Radiant team back. And they go Queen of Pain again here for S Triple C. We saw it in the last game. <laughs> and it just never really got the ball rolling. Now it gives them mobility, but again, lacking what they need in control. Now they're relying on a four position to give them that stunt. Remaining. Lena's not available. Five seconds remaining. New bees turn now Tide is banned. It was a pretty tough spot here for newbie uh, for their draft. New bees turn to pick. And they finally banned that drow. Last ban on the Drow. A lot of opportunity for both teams to take it. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds So we'll remaining. see what the final pick for Nubia will be. Maybe they go back to that Rubik. Abaddon's going to be a hard five. They could put Sand King 4 and go to another offlaner. And they'll go Night Stalker. So Night Stalker, Queen of Pain, Sand King, Troll, Abaddon. Again, I mean, that's always nice to have that silence, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough here for Newbie. Well, Ehome, like I said, they've got Vortex, they've got Split Earth, they've got Avalanche Toss. Five seconds remaining. Looking really nice here for their control. And we'll see what they finish their draft with. Go to Naga So end on the Naga. Mid storm. Off lane was Shrak. Four position Jin Q Tiny. And then Innocence with the Oracle. And that is Jin Q, who is. I I've seen in the past play that Tiny really well. And. It'll be Offlane, Night Stalker, 4 position, Sand King, Mid Queen of Pain, Jaja on the Troll, Fenrir on the Abaddon. Hmm. Just 
just don't know if this is going to be enough here for newbie. A lot of control for Ehome. We'll see if Alwyn's Night Stalker is going to be enough here, but I, I do suspect that it, th this lack of control is going to be a problem. And I know I'm harping on it. I know I keep saying control, 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 but you've got pushing potential here from Ehome too. And when you don't have a lot of control here for the Storm Spirit, it can be a big problem. I'm surprised they gave up. You know, they gave up so much to E-Home. So, let's see what they could do. I'd like to be surprised, honestly, at what newbie are bringing to the table <laughs> with the Burrow Strike. They'll have the Silence of the Night Stalker. If Troll can keep up on them, we'll see. But I expect a lot of mobility coming out of Ehome, a lot of rotations coming out of Jin Q. He is always someone to put the pressure on in this four position. Let me place this ward here. It will not spot Alwyn. Wrapping around is why she. I'll take out some trees. Just looking for somebody around here. Thirty seconds to battle. Oh, and holding his positioning. Jean Jean over bottom, so it looks like they're gonna throw the off laner in the long lane and and troll in the off lane. In Q. Looking over at Alwyn and maybe looking for a potential TP swap, but they are just going to walk to the opposite lanes, though. No, oh, actually, Jaja goes back towards bottom. Not sure if they spotted anything in particular to put the troll bottom again after it looked like he was going to go towards top. He actually hasn't even committed to the lane yet. And Alwyn is still over near mid. Why she will be over towards top here with Jing Q. The four positions just in their lanes by themselves. As finally Alwyn will come across and they will send the troll towards the top lane. And they will commit the matchups. And going over towards bottom, you've got Faith Beyond already here showing himself. He'll start to walk towards top. They'll TP work over towards bottom. So they don't TP anybody in, in crucial in the lane yet. And I think they are just looking for the proper matchup. But Jaja still not in lane. Alwyn still not in lane. Faith Beyond, he left his lane, so he abandoned his post at the moment. But at the same time, now you've got End in a lane and still dealing with two cores on Newbie yet to show up. Finally, the troll is here. As Faith Beyond level 1 to the level 3 of this Sand King. And they'll bring Jinq bottom. He's got Avalanche and Toss. You start with a Fortune Zen. Avalanche Toss could be devastating. They'd probably want to go on that Abaddon, who is using the Mist Coil to spam on the Zhaja. But they'll toss back to the range creep. Tower hits for a moment. They'll charge up the Fortune Zen with Purifying Flames. A Photic Shield placed onto this troll, still trying to run. Fenrir has Miss Coil in a moment and will heal up this troll. Meanwhile, over mid, they lose Ferrari to the Queen of Pain. So, 
Newbie actually come out ahead. A lot of life spent by Fenrir to miss Coil Zaza. But well worth it if they're able to keep him alive. They're trying to surprise him potentially with the avalanche as well as the toss over to the range creep back by the tower. But it doesn't end up amounting to anything. Give newbie 1,000 net worth lead at the moment as end over towards top. Just trying to push away all win and then bottom once again. We see continuing to farm his faith beyond. So where is Tianmin? He's coming around over mid, and if he can find S Triple C, that would be nice. He's got Avalanche. He doesn't toss him yet. Value point in Vortex and yeah, and oh, Jinkyu pausing as he was getting a little bit of lag. So now I guess Iron at 19 and 3. Now, N taking a bit of harassment coming in from Fenrir with the Mist Coils. We'll need somebody to help, and now the Vortex comes out. That's on Awashi. Avalanche to follow it up. And then they'll toss the Storm on top of him to get the kill. Alwyn, meanwhile, goes down over bottom. Shadow Strike thrown and double damage picked up by the Queen of Pain. Jinkyu in a lot of trouble. We'll eat that tango, but with the double damage, they're able to get the kill, and another pause comes out by the Oracle. Reconnecting is Ferrari. So TM Ming, or Jinkyu does end up dying. Connect the storm who does have that value point in the vortex. That's the control they can start with. Vortex avalanche toss or vortex in a split earth. Here we go. Jaja. Against end now. Both about even an experience. So, more than enough mana now to blink, just in case. Why she will be over towards bottom. We'll see as he was trying to get the pull here. Won't be able to get it. And they're going to send a bunch of heroes towards bottom. And we'll just be the storm going into the jungle and not really putting any pressure on over into this bottom lane. But it now is nighttime. Five minutes in. Fortune's end to start this. They'll have the split earth to go with it. Diabolic Edict rings away. Avalanche toss on to Alwyn. They'll get the kill. Jinkyu coming around to help get one over bottom. So Newbie leading in the net worth, not leading in the kills. They are happy with that as S Triple C over mid is doing a very good job. He's 30 and 10. Naga doing a great job here at 28 and 3. And has this stack to work with. So end at level 4. Against this troll is a little bit behind in terms of experience. But Naga happy nonetheless. Q comes over. Why she has to be careful. Middle tower 
it's under attack. Alwyn taking a lot of damage here from the Diabolic Edict, just forced all the way back into the hands of Fenrir, who does have that Mist Coil. Newbie rotating a couple of heroes while she was spotted. They've got the Abaddon with the Mist Coil, so now they know he's there. Burrow Strike comes in on the Faith Beyond, and he knew that the Sand King was nearby, but four heroes coming in bottom to help get this kill into the Lestrat. Storm all the way back at base. Ferrari, he is level 6, so he does have the ball lightning to work with. And they'll bring the Lashrak over top, too. So Ferrari's going to look for ball lightning with the Electric Vortex to line up with the Split Earth. And there it is, ball lightning with the Vortex missing the Split Earth. The coronation a little bit poor here for me, home. Just a bit unfortunate there for Ehome. Maybe taking advantage of the missed opportunities of Ehome as they do lead the way. Thousand net worth in their favor. Avalanche tossing him up. Why is she coming over? They might be able to get the kill here on the Jinkyu. They'll root him. They hit him with the Burrow Strike. Alwyn comes over. Four heroes again for Newbie. Make that five heroes here. Faith Beyond. He'll be wrapped around on by the Queen of Pain. And they will get themselves a second for Newbie. But this requires all five heroes to come to the lane. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower. Nice thing here for Ehom is they. Get a lot of open space with five heroes going over towards top. And you're gonna pressure over bottom. As Fake Beyond gets the kill over mid. On S triple C. Why she has to be careful? Split Earth lands, and now he's forced to burrow strike away. Shin Q looking for an opportunity while End continued to push that bottom lane, forcing a rotation out. But mid now looking to be the tower that's in trouble. And will end up grabbing this tower with the help of Diabolic Edict, sitting already at level three. And this time it will be a Rod of Atos for the Lashrak. We've been seeing a lot of Yules is coming out. Or a lot of Yules coming out. Now we've got a Rod of Atos that will give them even more control. on the high ground with Fenrir and actually with the troll as well as the Sand King still looking forward for the Oracle Sonic Wave will come out Innocence ends up dying it's over top and looks over at the Night Stalker but unable to keep up meanwhile oh in Q Jesus. 32 health, able to survive. So, newbie happy with the spot that they're in at the moment. Ten and a half minutes in. We'll switch over to the net worth. Could have been a little bit earlier, but... We see that as Triple C is sitting top of the net worth, and this is something we saw out of him in the previous game. The problem was he fell off very hard. Moved around, went over top, got three kills, and then from there it was pretty much quiet. And he's really hoping that this is not the same outcome. Right now the slow farming game is kind of helping out Ehome as Naga Siren. 
We'll be going into the Mantis style. Level 8. Sitting here with 4 in the Mirror Image, 1 in the Ensnare. Riptide at level 3. And then Storm going into Kaya. We can use some mana to get in on these fights, but it's not going to matter. They'll get the Ensnare. They've got the Split Earth. All I'm going to die anyway. And now the Diabolic Edict is going to smash through this tower. It is level 4, and they will take the Tier 1 with the kill. Under attack. So even up the net worth game and continuing to be a part of something and continuing to farm is the Nagasa. Radiance bottom tower has fallen. I want the storm to continue to farm. They've got quite a bit of farm coming out on to end, as well as the offlane of Lushrak. Who's got so much already? We'll have this rod of Atos already delivered. And they need to be careful. Diabolic Edict level 3. If nobody's over towards top, they could just, in fact, lose a tower. As Faith Beyond would go in with the Diabolic Edict, do a bunch of damage. Here with the pressure coming out from the Oracle and the Tiny. And that would be it very quickly. Four techs. Ball ending over. They've got the Rod of Atos. They'll get the kill again on all when there was a TP attempted over into the shrine. But you've got four heroes here over top for Ehome. And there's no way that newbie want a piece of that. Diabolic Edict before these creeps. Doing a lot of damage here. And starting to ring in on this tower. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Basically just using it every time it's off cooldown. He'll have a little help here from Jinkyu. This is opening up the map though. 4S Triple C on this Queen of Pain going into the Orchid. And then Troll's got Dyer's some time that he's going into the Battle Fury like we saw previously there for Silar on Team Sirius. Get that pressure out there. And you grab yourself both the tier one and the tier two over top. It's turning into trouble. You get these early towers and you're able to choke out the farm and suffocate where they're able to go. You make their farming spots predictable, you'll be able to place wards there, find your vision, and then be aggressive moving in. So Ehome, they can do just that with the Diabolic Edict. They'll move over. Might find Jaja. There's the Rod of Atos. They'll have the Squid Earth to follow this up. Fortune's Egg comes out. Avalanche is there. Jaja surviving. As he uses that ult, getting pulled into the Diabolic Edict, and then will be turned on. Innocence gets the kill. The Burrow Strike from Waishi. Is that really where you want to go with this? You don't have your troll. You'll go back to the high ground. The Split Earth lands. And now they've got the Rod of Atos Avalanche toss on the S-Triple-C. Fortune Zen comes out onto Jinkyu's trying to run away. Silence up by Alwyn. Ball Lightning out from Ferrari. But just comes back. Moves in for a moment. Dips back. No worse for the wear. This is turned into a 2,000 net worth lead here for Ehome. Storm not committing to going in, but he's going into the Kaya and then the BKB. lushrak has got that Rod of Atos ready, going into the Yules next. And where is Shinkyu? He's going drums. We'll see when he is, and if ever, Dyer's able to get that blink deck. Almost has that Orchid. We'll see if that is enough. Dyer's they'll have the Silence from the Night Stalker as well as the Orchid. Are those Silences enough here? Do they make up for the lack of control? Got 
Got the Mantis style on end. Top of the net worth and very far ahead going into the Fusal Blade next. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. He's not been bothered this whole time. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. And again, Faith Beyond taking another tower, Radiant's constricting the map. Making it very hard for Newbie to farm away and find openings. As long as the vision's there for Ehome, they should be okay to get these kills and get these pickoffs. Because you won't feel comfortable going out far in these lanes when you don't have towers and you don't have vision. Radiant's top tower. Got themselves another tower. They have one outer tower remaining 17 minutes into the game. And they're not defending either. Or any of them. All in mid. He needs to be careful. Avalanche comes out, but that's not going to be near the Night Stalker. Meanwhile, let's track. He'll walk back. Home side just continuing to farm his storm. He's still looking for that BKB and and looking for the Diffusal Blade. And Wishrak will also look for BKB, so they could be in a good spot with these BKBs once they are able to come out. And then you've also got Naga Siren with the Diffusal. These three items coming in for the cores of E Home can be crucial. Whereas for Newbie, they should have the Orchid in a moment for the Queen of Pain. Troll will have Yasha as he's got the Battle Fury already. Veil for the Sand King. We'll see if that ends up being enough for him. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. I'm being chased and now spot end. Board comes in, but Song used immediately. Follow up with Burrow Strike. They've got the Epicenter. They'll pop the ult on Alwyn, but Epicenter comes out and, well, they find nothing for it. Oh. New Home just constantly avoiding one newbie are throwing it. Truly, where do you find your opening? Naga Siren has 10,000 net worth already and is about to have a Diffusal Blade. Meanwhile, BKBs are being built for the Shrak as well as the Storm. If they both get BKBs, I don't know what you ask, ask for from your team. What can your team do? Dyer got to be looking for a way out of this game. And that might come with pressure when they're behind. And it might have to come from pressure when they're behind. But it has to be off cooldowns as well. Song is down for 30 seconds. The only thing here is False Promise is available. So even if you get close to the Naga Siren, False Promise could keep her alive long enough to get that song out. Radiance top tower is under attack. Slow methodical push coming out here so far from E Home. As it looks like their last outer tower is gonna fall. They throw the dust on Elijah. He'll blink away immediately. And they are forced onto their high ground just 21 minutes in. No more pressure being put on to newbie. And blink, bro, strike. There's the orchid, but Jinkyu will be okay. Got the 
Fortune Zen, you've got the Dispel, able to take away the Silence, able to have this Tiny just walk out of this one, and all that's happening while the rotation comes out for the Queen of Pain. You've got Naga Siren going into the Sky D, has the Manta style as well as the Diffusal Blade, BKB still being built here for both the Storm as well as the Lashrak, and they are close to grabbing it. And they have no outer towers to worry about anymore. Maybe just trying to hold on for the moment. Not down by much in terms of net worth, but still. Tower deficit wise, they are in trouble. As we take a look, Jaja already dead. Looking over the Lashrak, they're gonna try and give chase, but the silence has been purged. He'll be saved for now by Innocent. Sonic Wave comes out, Faith Beyond Low, False Promise will be used. Ball Lightning onto the back lines. They get the kill there on a Fenrir, but they finally do lose Innocence. Ball Lightning back onto the high ground. False Promise runs out. Faith Beyond okay. Epicenter charged up. There's the Rod of Atos. Ball Lightning in. All in in trouble. He'll end up oh, on the low ground. Back over towards this cliff, and Avalanche comes in to get the kill. So three for one. From there... And will go into Roche. Not the quickest of Roshan attempts, but effective. King comes out, but it's not going to matter. And they'll give the Aegis over to Ferrari. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Had to expect that they would take Roche off that if they had the opportunity and ability to do so, and they did. KB for Faith Beyond. 500 gold away. Storm. He's got his. If Newbie even show themselves for a split second, they could be in trouble. Show the list track. Why is she... Got the save, but... Nope. Vision is there. The Burrow Strike comes out. Now they've got the Silence onto the Oracle. Ball lightning over, and S Triple C is in a lot of trouble. They've got the Vortex, and with the Fortune's end, they'll get the kill. It was a bait the whole time. They baited the bait. And that all came through with the TP. I'm not too sure if that was just a bait in itself to get the Sand King to come in, or to get somebody to move in. Once they got the silence onto the Oracle, they knew the Orchid wasn't there. Ferrari could come in. He ball lightnings all the way over. And they're able to get the kill here onto the Queen of Pain. Oh, and in the enemy jungle, Courier comes over. That'll spot him. Jin Q, though, without the Blink Dagger, building it now. Working with Aegis as well as the BKBs. So a lot of opportunity here for Eom to start really putting the pressure on Anubi. Eom is just wandering through their enemy's jungle. Start to come across. And newbie forced to go all the way back, but here comes Zan. Gets the defusal out into Zhaja, and a lot of trouble. The root comes through. They've got the miscoil. Avalanche on the two. Ronovay chose to follow it up. The split earth comes in, but the burrow strike, as well as the epicenter on the three. Zhaja goes down. The Sonic Wave comes across. BKB's going to be popped by Faith Beyond. They've got themselves the song. 
So now do they reinitiate? Do they try to go back in? They finally have Ferrari. He's full health, full mana coming through. Burrow Strike onto the high ground, the blink onto the back lines. S Triple C gets a kill. The false promise is going to be placed on a Faith Beyond. The ball ending over. S Triple C vortex over. There's the Yules. Faith Beyond will get for the split. Earth will land in. They get the kill on Alwyn as well. And that will be three dead. Burrow Strike comes in. Faith Beyond low, but no, just can't survive. But this will cause why she is like. Or am I going to be wrong again, Zwashi? Again. There it is. <laughs> I've done that once to him already. And we'll cut the jugular and GG will be called by newbie Ehome. Take game one. Be honest, not the most exciting game of all time, but uh, Ehome still looking very good there over Newbie, a, a team in which I thought Newbie with this roster were gonna look a lot better, but they might just be defeated after that 2-0 against Sirius. Ehome finally look like they're clicking on some sort of level, and I said if they started to click, they could definitely be a team here that can fight for a minor spot. So far, halfway through this group stage, to me, it looks like Ehome, Sirius, and I would say Keen Gaming, most likely, are the three teams that have an opportunity. But Keen Gaming just split with Aster, so they're 1-1. One one. The only one to 2-0 right now is Sirius. So, we'll be back with Game 2. Only 15-9 in this one, a lot of farming going on. But we'll see if that changes in game number two between these teams. I'm your caster, Bcop, at Bcop92 on Twitter. Follow me to know when I'm casting. To know about the Chinese scene, I always give updates. Um, I know the West is sometimes kind of uh, just radio silent on these East on this Eastern news. But uh, I do what I can to update as much as I can. And we'll be back with game two in just a moment. Stay right there.